Hello again everybody and welcome back to another edition of On The Range and today I'm back in the A-10A Warthog going over some techniques that I like to use during the takeoff roll and talking about the takeoff in the A-10 in general. And even though this is in the A-10A model, everything I go over applies directly to the A-10C as well. So what I'm going to do with this video is go through three different scenarios and show a takeoff roll, give an example of what it looks like and describe what I do in each. The first scenario is going to be an empty aircraft with no wind. Then I'm going to put an asymmetric loadout on the aircraft and see what that does. And then I'm going to take off into a crosswind and see what that does. I'm going over exactly what you're going to be facing in those three different scenarios. So just like everything else in the A-10 or in a flight sim in general, you're going to get the most out of it if you put some preparation into it. And there's just a little bit of preparation that you can do to make the takeoff a lot easier on you. And first, it's right here on the briefing screen. I'm going to check the winds. In this case, I have no wind on this mission, so wind is not a factor. But we'll see on the next takeoff where this does come into play a little bit. And I'm also going to check my aircraft's gross weight. And I can do that by going to the mission planner and then selecting and viewing my payload. And right here, I have a total gross weight for the aircraft. Right now, I have an empty aircraft with a full load of fuel on board. So my total gross weight is 37,829. I'll just round that up to 38,000 for the purposes that I'm going to go through right here. Now what I can do with this information is calculate the speed at which I need to pull back on the stick and start the process of getting into the air. And that's very important because if you pull back too early, you're going to lose efficiency and run the risk of having your tail impact the ground if you don't maintain control. If you take off too late, you could be uh, too fast in the takeoff roll, and it, it'll work either way. I mean, the bottom line is that you just get into the air, but by calculating the proper rotation speed, uh, the speed at which you want to pull back on the stick, you're going to ensure that the takeoff feels the exact same way every time, and that the aircraft reacts the same way every time. And that's why I like to do just a simple calculation and just set it up so that I know what to expect. So I'm going to do that based on 38,000 pounds. And what I can do is go to a chart that is available in a variety of different places. If you go to the video entitled A-10 Flight Crew Checklist, this is another in the On the Range series, you'll see two examples of checklists that include this chart. And I'll go to one right now. And this chart is taken out of one of those checklists. It's the one off of the 476 Virtual Fighter Group site put together by Snoopy. And it gives an example of a chart that you'll also find in the A-10A flight manual. So based on that calculated takeoff gross weight of 38,000 pounds, more or less, what I do is I come down here to the bottom of the chart, find the 38, which signifies 38,000 pounds, follow the line up until it intersects one of these two lines, I'm going to base this on having my flaps down at 7 degrees. Okay, so I find the point that it intersects the 7 degree flap line. I come over to the left, and there's my rotation speed. For 38,000 pound gross weight on the aircraft, I want to rotate at 135 knots. And what that's going to do is, once I rotate at 135 knots, I can then keep coming up to this last line. It's the SR SERC, in single engine... Oh, uh, what is that called? It's the SCRC, Single Engine Rate of Climb Line. So essentially, this is the airspeed where you're going to lift off of the runway, and that's going to be around 145 knots. Or a quick rule of thumb way to do it is just add 10 knots to your rotation speed, and that'll be your liftoff speed, the speed at which you actually leave the, uh, leave the runway. Okay, so we have 135 knots. So with that information, we have all the information that we need. We know that there is no wind to deal with. We know that we have an empty aircraft and we're going to be rotating at 135 knots, expecting to lift off the runway at 145. So armed with that information, let's go ahead and get into the aircraft and see what we need to look at once we're on the runway. And picking things up in the cockpit, and I show just the basic preparation that you can do, that I usually do no matter what I'm doing for a takeoff. It's like everything else, you could take it just layer upon layer of additional preparation and additional work. And I'll probably show the full gamut of it in a, in a later video. I could have uh, calculated predicted fan speeds, uh, air speeds for 1,000 feet down the runway, uh, refusal speed, continuation speed, a whole bunch of 
and different calculations that go into just getting the takeoff roll right. But, okay, you've seen the basics. All I really want to show in this video is the takeoff roll and the technique. So I'll, I'll restrain myself and get right to it. Okay, so first thing that I need to verify is that I have the correct flap setting. I wanted 7 degrees on my flaps. That was what I calculated my rotation speed for. So I'm going to bring it down to 7 degrees. That's the maneuver setting on the flaps. And I'll leave it there until I get airborne. Okay, next up, I'm going to hold the brakes. Actually, let me just talk through the process real quick. I'll talk through it and then demonstrate it. So what I'm going to do is hold the brakes, run the throttles up to 90% core RPM on both engines, check the engine instruments, and just do a quick check of the cockpit just to make sure that I'm ready to take off, that there are no unexpected errors or unexpected conditions. I'm going to release the brakes, advance the throttles to full, and then once I get going, different forces are going to start acting on the aircraft. But my main concern is just to keep the track down the center line of the runway. I'm going to reach 135 knots. I'll have an airspeed reference up in my HUD. I'll have another airspeed reference down here at my, my airspeed indicator. That's my primary reference. At 135 knots, I pull back gently on the stick, just enough to get the nose coming up. I bring the nose up to 10 degrees. Using the ADI, Attitude Direction Indicator, as my primary reference, I just want to bring it up to the, so that the wings that are now at the horizon are up at that first tick mark, that's the 10 degree mark. That's my primary reference, but I have a secondary reference of just using the pitch ladders on the HUD. So I'll bring the top of the HUD up to the 10 degree pitch ladder. That's cheating, but that is there as an indicator as well. And once I reach the... A liftoff speed that we calculated, which is 10 knots above the rotation speed, the or 145 knots in this case, I can expect the aircraft to come off the ground. I just want to maintain that 10 degree nose up pitch, retract the gear, and then I once I'm safely in the air, uh, say 100 or say 10 knots above my uh, takeoff speed, and then I can safely retract the flaps and start navigating from there. So let's go ahead and run through this real quick. And just like everything, there is a lot more to it, and I'll get to it in a later video, but this is just basic technique for takeoff. So right now, I'm holding the brakes, which in the case of the A model and Flaming Cliffs is the W key. I'm running my engines up to 90% core RPM. Checking engine instruments, and I'll, I'll get to engine instrument indications that you'll be looking for once I do this in the C model. I'm checking for no caution and warning lights on. I'm going to release the brakes. I'm going to advance the throttles to max. And now I'm just using very gentle rudder inputs, compensating as smoothly and as precisely as I can for any condition that gets me off track. With no wind, no payload on the aircraft, that's easy. Now I'm paying attention to my airspeed, 120 knots, 135, rotate for 10 degrees, hold it right there, and I'm off the ground at 145 knots. I go gear up. 165 knots, that's plenty of airspeed for me to pull my flaps up, so flaps up. And that's a basic takeoff roll in A-10. You have plenty of time, as long as you uh, aren't really fighting the controls on the aircraft and you're making those smooth rotor inputs to maintain the track down the center line of the runway, you have plenty of time in the A-10 to compensate and to really plan ahead. So you're just looking for 135 knots, pulling back very, very gently on the stick. Just, just enough to get that nose coming up. And then you hold it right there at that 10 degree nose up on the pitch ladder. And then you just let the aircraft fly off of the runway. You don't try to pull the aircraft into the air. You just rotate, affect the pitch of the A-10, and let the A-10 fly itself off. That's the basic technique. Now we'll see once we get into some different conditions that... It's not always that easy, so let me go ahead and get back on to the end of the runway, and I'll demonstrate that again in... I'll demonstrate that again with an asymmetric loadout on the aircraft. So I will be right back. And now I'm back in the aircraft with an asymmetric loadout. Let me go to the external view to show you exactly what I mean. In this case, you can see that on my left wing, I have an ECM pod, a rocket pod, a Maverick, and a Mark 82. On my right wing, I have A9s, a Maverick, and a Mark 82. So I have more stuff and more drag on my left wing than I do on my right wing. And what that's going to do is, since I have more drag on the left side, on the takeoff roll and in flight, uh, in all regimes of flight, 
I'm going to tend to pull in the direction of the drag. So on this takeoff roll, I'm going to tend to pull to the left. So what I need to do is pay attention to that and compensate for it with gentle, smooth rudder inputs into the direction that's going to keep me on that center line track. Okay, so just like before, I'm going to run through the basics. And incidentally, I'm still at 38,000 pound gross weight. I adjusted my fuel load just to get back into those same parameters. So I could have gone back and added more fuel and recalculated my rotation and uh, takeoff uh, takeoff speeds, but I kept them at 135 and 145 for this one. So I'm going to bring my flaps down to the 7 degrees maneuver setting and leave them there for takeoff. And I'm going to hold the brakes, run them up to 90% core RPM on the engines. And I'm just going to monitor the engine instruments, monitor my caution warning panel, have a look around the cockpit and just make sure that I'm ready to go. Okay, get myself situated. I'll release brakes. Advance the throttles to full. And as I pick up speed, yeah, there's a pronounced pull to the left into the direction that I have more drag on the wing. So I have to compensate with right rudder. I've got just a little bit of right rudder in there right now. I'm just kind of easing off on it periodically. Okay, 135. Rotate for 10 degrees. 145. The aircraft lifts up. I bring the gear up. And I bring my flaps up. And I just maintain that 10 degree climb angle until I'm established and I'm ready to uh, start maneuvering and start navigating towards different points. And so the key there is that I had more drag out there so the aircraft pulls into the direction of the drag. And you can see right now that it, with no control inputs, yeah, I'm pulling into that direction. So it's got a roll and a, a yaw going around to the left that I have to compensate for and that I have to trim out using my trim controls. So that's the effect of an asymmetric loadout. And now let me go back to a clean configuration and show you one more effect. And this is the one that can really get you and really confuse you, especially when you have a combination of asymmetric loadout and crosswind. So it's crosswind that we'll look at next. I'll be right back in a fresh aircraft. Okay, so now I've loaded up some wind into the mission and I can see from the briefing that winds at ground level where I'm taking off from are 5 meters per second blowing towards 006. So 5 meters per second is roughly 10 knots. 006 is due north. So it's going to be blowing, I'm taking off from left to right as you see it on this map. It's going to be blowing from my right to left. So let me get into the cockpit and I'll describe what's going to happen on this one. And I will see you in a second. And in the aircraft, again, with that wind coming from my right to left. Now, in a crosswind takeoff, the aircraft is going to weather vane into the direction of the wind. So in this case, I am going to weather vane to the right. The nose of the aircraft is going to pull to the right and want to go into the wind. I still have, however, that asymmetric load on my left wing, which is going to cause it to tend to go to the left. I'm betting in this case that the crosswind is going to override that asymmetry and that predominantly I'm going to be putting in left pedal as I go down the runway to compensate for the aircraft weather veining into the wind, into the direction the wind is coming from, uh, from my right. So again, okay, I'm going to verify flaps are at seven degrees. I have again got my aircraft set up with a 38,000 pound gross weight. I'm going to rotate by pulling back on, gently on the stick at 135 knots. I'm going to put the nose at 10 degrees nose up and let the aircraft fly itself off the runway. Now I'm going to have that significant or moderate rudder input required to keep me going down the runway. Once I'm airborne, I want to blend that rudder input out and just let the aircraft crap naturally back into the direction of the wind and use the aileron to uh, get myself just back into a normal flight regime that's going to put me just flying normally without a rudder input. So let me go ahead and get this started. I'm going to, again, hold the brakes by depressing the W key. Run them up to 90% core RPM. I'm going to check engine instruments. I'm going to check caution and warning panel lights. And I know that there is more to the lineup check, and you'll see me do a lot more than this in my H&C videos. But this is all that you can really do in the A10A. If you want to go through the motions of doing the complete lineup check, uh, by all means, it's, um, it's not really that much more to it. But this is what I'm going to show for now. So I'm going to release brakes, 
advanced throttles max. And initially, I had that little bump over to the left as the uh, drag on the left wing takes over. But as I get above about 70 knots, then the aerodynamic forces on the aircraft take, start to take over. And now I've got a little bit of left rudder. So as I increase airspeed, 135, rotate 10 degrees, and airborne. And I'm going to go gear up, I'm going to go flaps up, and I just ease off the rudder and use the aileron. I'm going to bank it to the right just to keep my track still going down the runway and maintain myself steering out towards my first steer point. So, depending on the situation you're in, uh, you know, with the asymmetric load, initially it did pull over in the direction of the asymmetry, but then as I started to get more aerodynamic forces on the aircraft, then I started to pull a little bit into the direction of the crosswind, and then had to, they kind of canceled each other out for a minute, and then it was a little bit more left pedal required to keep the track down the runway. But that's what I was expecting, so... You know, everything was already pre-planned out. Everything was pre-computed. I knew exactly when I was rotating. I knew what forces were going to act on the aircraft, and I was able to very easily keep it uh, keep it more or less going straight down the center line. I would have been able to do it a lot better if I hadn't been talking uh, the entire time. So those are the effects that you'll get on just a basic empty aircraft takeoff. I then showed one with an asymmetric loadout and showed the tendency of the aircraft to pull into the direction of the asymmetry, and then I showed a crosswind takeoff that demonstrated that at low air speeds it still goes in the direction of the asymmetry, but as you start to pick up aerodynamic loads on the aircraft as you go faster and faster, then the crosswind, since it was coming from the opposite direction, canceled it out, and then I started having to correct into the direction the wind was coming from to, uh, to, oh I'm sorry, I had to correct in the opposite direction with left pedal since the wind was coming to the from the right to keep the aircraft going uh, straight down the center line. So hopefully you did pick something up from this. It's a very, very interesting effect and it's just one part of getting the aircraft into the air and getting into a mission. So I hope you did enjoy it and I will see you next time. Thanks again for watching.